Hello. Welcome to this lecture on business in the 21st century. This is an introductory lecture that provides an overview of organization and process of contemporary businesses where information and communication technologies become an integral part of the processes. After this presentation, you will be able to define business and how does it function. Since a business runs through an organization, you will know how the decision-making process at the different level of organization takes place. Business by nature is dynamic and to be sustained in the long run, you should be able to understand the nature of contemporary business dynamics and the influence of technologies in support of gaining competitive advantages. Finally, you are also expected to get an overview of business information systems and business rules. A business is an organization or enterprising entity engaged in commercial, industrial or professional activities. A business can be a for-profit entity such as publicly traded corporation or a non-profit organization engaged in business activities such as an agricultural cooperatives. Business includes everything from a small owner-operated company such as a family restaurant to a multinational conglomerate such as General Electric. To do business with another company, a business must engage in some kind of transaction or exchange of value with that company. In this sense, the word business can be used to refer to a specific industry or activity such as the real estate business or the advertising businesses. Types of businesses vary depending on the nature of products or services produced, ownerships, management structures, and operation processes. There are many types of business entities defined in the legal system of various countries. These include corporations, cooperatives, partnerships, sole traders, limited liability, and other specifically permitted and level types of entities. The, the specific rules vary by country and by state or province. Business activities are also known as business operations, include any activity that is engaged in for the primary purpose of making a profit. A business activities can include things like operations, marketing, production, and administrations working integratedly in order to achieve certain goals. There are six basic activities in a typical business, such as budgeting, accounting, marketing, sales, hiring, and retaining employees and customer services. Information is needed for these operations to function efficiently. Production is a process of combining various material inputs and immaterial inputs in order to make something for consumption, which is synonymously be called as the output. It is the act of creating output, a good or tangible or service, intangible, which has value and contributes to the utility of individuals. A production function relates to the input of factors of production to the output of goods. In the basic production functions, inputs are typically capital and labor, though more expensive and complex production functions may include other variables, such as land or natural resources. Any production process involves a series of links in a production chain. At each stage, value is added in the course of production. Adding value involves making a product more desirable to a consumer so that they will pay more for it. Adding value, therefore, is not just about manufacturing, but includes the marketing process, including advertising, promotion, and distribution that makes the final product more desirable. It is very important for business to identify the process that add value so that they can enhance these processes to the ongoing benefits of the businesses. A customer sometimes known as a client, buyer, or purchaser, is the recipient of a good or a service or a product or an idea obtained from a seller, vendor, or supplier via financial transaction or exchange for money 
or some other valuable consideration. Etymologically, a client is a someone merely inclined to do business, whereas a purchaser procures goods or services on occasion, but a customer customarily or habitually engages in transactions. These distinctions is merely historic. Today, customers are generally categorized into two types, an entrepreneur or traders, sometimes a commercial intermediary, who is a dealer that purchases goods for resale, and an end user or ultimate customer who doesn't resell the things bought, but is the actual consumer or an agent, such as the purchasing officer for the consumer. A customer may or may not also be a consumer, but the two notions are distinct, even though the terms are commonly confused. A customer purchases good, a consumer uses them. An ultimate uh, customer may be a consumer as well, but just as equally may have purchased items for someone else to consume. Please note that a, a throw a thorough stakeholder analysis will help you to identify the people relevant to your businesses, including your customers. Profit is a financial benefit that is realized when the amount of revenue gained from a business activity exceeds the expenses, cost, and taxes needed to sustain the activity. Any profit that is gained goes to the business owners who may or may not decide to spend it on the business. This is simply calculated as profit is equal to total sales less total cost. Profit is the financial return or reward that entrepreneurs aim to achieve to reflect the risk that they take. Given the most entrepreneurs invest in order to make a return, the profit earned by business can be used to measure the success of that investment. Profit is also an important signal to other providers of finance to a business. Banks, suppliers, and other lenders are more likely to provide finance to a business that can demonstrate that it makes a profit and it can, play, it can pay debts as they fall due. In financial management has come a long way by shifting its focus from traditional approach to a modern approach. The modern approach focuses on wealth maximization rather than profit maximization. This gives a longer term horizon for assessment, making way for sustainable performance by the business. In wealth maximization, major emphasis is on cash flows rather than profit. So to evaluate various alternatives for decision making, cash flows are taken under consideration. Thus, uh, maximization of wealth approach believes that money has time value. Finally, please note that not all businesses operate for a profit. Some not-for-profit organizations do not give any income to the owners, but instead use all net incomes to improve the organizations. Examples include hospitals, churches, schools, and community service organizations. Government agencies also are not-for-profit organization. To accomplish its purpose, a business organization must perform certain functions. For example, a business must buy and sell goods, manufacture products, pay employees, and so forth. These functions are grouped into general categories often called functional areas. Let's start to define these functional areas one by one. The accounting function is responsible for recording and reporting financial information about the business. The function records data about the business's assets, which are the items the business owns, such as cash, equipment, buildings, and its liabilities, which are the debt of the business. It also records data about the business's revenues and expenses. Periodically, the function produces reports on the financial state of the business. All types of business require an accounting function. The details, however, may vary somewhat for different types of businesses. The finance function of a business is responsible for obtaining money needed by the business 
and for planning the use of that money. Money for a business comes from the sale of goods and services, from investments made by the business, and from banks and other institutions that loan money to the business. Once money is obtained, it can be used for the day-to-day -day operations of the businesses, or it can be invested for future use. The finance functions plans what money is needed, determines the best way to obtain the money, and decides how the money should be used. The finance function is closely related to the accounting function. All types of businesses need a finance function. Some businesses, however, do more financial work than others. For example, financial service companies such as banks have extensive finance functions. Other businesses such as retail stores may have comparatively small finance functions. The marketing function sells the goods and services of a business. To do so, it must determine what products to sell and at what price. That it must promote the products by advertising and other means. Finally, it must make the actual sale and distribute the products that it sells. All businesses have some form of marketing functions, although its size varies significantly. The manufacturing functions, also called production, is responsible for producing the goods that the business sells. The manufacturing function must require the materials or parts that go into the goods being manufactured. It must keep track of the goods as they are manufactured and they are completed. It must control the manufacturing process to be sure it runs smoothly and cost effectively. The human resource management functions, sometimes called personnel, is responsible for hiring, training, compensating, and terminating employees. This function must recruit and select employees, assess the skills of employees, and determine the appropriate job for each employee. In addition, it must provide a continual education and development of employees, determine appropriate compensation, including benefits, and provide procedures for termination due to resignation, retirement, or dismissal. The business functions described above are the most common ones found in businesses. Other functions, however, may be performed in certain businesses. One is the research and development, one is the research and development function, which is responsible for developing new products to be manufactured by the business. Another is the information services function, which is responsible for providing computer information system support for the business. Still, other function may be found in certain type of businesses. An organization is an entity comprised of an individual or group of people that collaborate under a certain decision making as well as legal and policy structures to achieve certain goals. All business organizations operate within an environment that influences the way in which the organization operates. Legislations, for example, will act to control some of the organization's activities. However, the actions of an organization may also influence parts of the environment. For example, companies may launch an advertising campaign designed to draw customers away from competitors. Increasingly, <clears throat> information systems are needed to help collect and make sense of information about the environment. The employees of a business are often grouped by the general functions they perform. Within each functional area, maybe smaller groups of people, often called departments, who have specific responsibilities related to the function. For example, in the marketing area, there may be a sales department, which is responsible for making sales, and an advertising department which prepare promotional materials. The employees of a department form one or more work groups to perform specific tasks or activities. The organizational structure of a business varies for different businesses. For example, a manufacturer would have a manufacturing functional area, 
but a wholesaler, retailers, or service business would not. Some businesses combine finance and accounting into one area, and some have other areas, such as research and development. Other types of organizational structures, not based on the business functions, are used by some businesses. For example, some businesses organize employees by product line or by geographic area. The effectiveness of a business organization often relates to the ability of leaders to get all departments and employees to work together toward company objectives. An efficient and effective management of an organization does the right thing faster, better, and smarter in the right context. In addition to supporting business operations, information is used in the management of business. Management involve, involves decision making. Managers make day-to-day -day decision about who should be allowed to purchase from the business on credit, how much should be ordered for inventory, and which suppliers should be used for purchases. Managers also make long-term decisions, such as what items should be stocked next season, and even whether the business should change to a whole new product line. A decision involves selecting among different courses of action. Decisions are part of the manager's remit. Difficult choices may have to be made for the common good of the organization. There are three types of decision in business. Strategic, strategic, strategic decisions, tactical decisions, and operational decisions. Strategic decisions are long-term complex long-term complex decisions made by senior management. These decisions will affect the entire direction of the firm. An example may, may be to become the market leader in their field. Tactical decisions are medium term, less complex decisions made by middle managers. They follow on from strategic decision and aim to meet the objectives stated in any strategic decision. For example, in order to become the market leader, a firm may have to launch a new product or services or open new branches. Operational decisions are day-to-day -day decisions made by junior managers that are simple and routine. This could involve the regular ordering of supplies or the creation of a staff. The product cannot flow from supplier to end customer without a wide range of defined information. The information links every component of the supply chain together. Information flows in two directions, from supplier to the customer and vice versa. The information used in business operations flows between people within a work group or a department and from one work group or department to another. The information may be sent by voice, on paper, or by computer. Here the figure uh, on your left side, it shows how information related to the sale of goods and the payment for the sale flows in a business. When a customer, which in this case is another business, wishes to purchase something, the customer transmits information about what it wants to order. The customer order information is received by salesperson in the sales department, which sends information about what is being sold to the shipping department. There the goods are packaged and sent to the customer. The shipping department sends information about what is shipped on to the billing department, which prepares the billing information indicating how much the customer owes. This information is sent to the customer and to the accounts receivable department. When the customer receives the billing information, it sends a payment which is received by the account receivable departments. These departments keep track of customer bills and payments and send reminder to customers who have not paid their bills. The flow of information in business operations described here will be defined in other types of business. In a manufacturing business, inventory for items, the business sales is not replaced by purchasing new stock. 
but by producing the items. Thus, inventory information would flow to the production department to start the manufacturing process. Waves of change are hitting organizations with increasing frequency and velocity. Technological and competitive pressure is forcing organizations to achieve greater efficiencies while meeting ever declining price points. As customers expect more for less, organizations have to deliver better service and greater value for money year on year. To survive, organizations must provide customers with great customer offerings and at the same time maintain their ability to change or reinvent themselves and do so with agility. Increased competition fueled by an expanding and maturing global marketplace and the penetration of technology into the home has led to rising customer expectations. To do better than just survive, organizations must offer something unique. In, this, in, the, in the industrial age, a key differentiator was price. But in the information age, there are many dimensions, including but certainly not limited to customer experience, personalized customer service, responsiveness, agility, and innovation. These are the dynamics that today's organizations face. Take, for example, 3M, a company that started out as a niche mining concern and evolved into a multi-billion dollar solution provider to customers in over 200 countries with over 55,000 product solutions, and Nokia, which started off as a manufacturer of paper, then went into rubber and electricity generation, then telecommunications. The most successful companies adapt to embrace and exploit chains. Others, but not all, survive. <clears throat> but change has always been present, and it has always been a necessity for organizations to master chains if they want to excel. Many organizations respond by reorganizing themselves and others just by reinventing themselves. During the 1980s, Michael Porter of Harvard Business School introduced a framework to identify five forces that influence industry competition and explain differences in profitability across industries. These are trade of new entrants, power of buyers, power of suppliers, trade of substitutes, and rivalry among existing competitors. Incumbent in industry pl players try to keep newcomers out in many ways, often drawing on innovative use of information systems. Incumbents have higher volumes that can mean lower cost per unit of production. A large customer base can be significant because of network effects, which refer to increased value of a product or service, the results because there are more people using it. For example, the value of Facebook is low if you can only connect a few people. But the more people who use that social network, the more valuable it becomes to everyone. Another example involves mobile phone carriers that foster network effects by offering free calling to any mobile phone on the same network. The carriers hope you will persuade your friends and family to select the same carriers. The power of buyers rises when they have leverage over suppliers and can demand deep discount and special services. If a supplier has a small number of buyers, the supplier is at a disadvantage since losing even one could be devastating. For example, companies whose main customer is government must deal with a very powerful buyer. Buyer power also rises when many suppliers often offer similar undifferentiated products and the buyer can deal with any of them to get about the same products. For example, with airline tickets on the most popular and competitive routes, buyers have considerable power. The power of suppliers is high when they are just about the only game in town 
and thus can charge more for their products and services. Microsoft is an example. Given the dominance of its Windows operating system, PC assemblers around the world risk losing customers if they don't install it. Microsoft can demand higher prices and require additional perks such as desktop icons. Walmart suppliers are an example of suppliers with low supply power. There are few products made by a single supplier for which Walmart could not find a close alternative to satisfy consumers. The threat of substitute is high when alternative products are available, especially if they offer attractive savings. For example, with rising fuel cost and tight travel budgets, video conferencing become an attractive substitute for business travel. Cisco reports that the company's video conferencing technology is the fastest growing product it has ever had. Information technology plays a key role in many examples of substitutions from online learning modules that replace face-to-face -face training classes to internet video that threatens cable television companies. The firms com compete mainly on price, rivalry is high, and the industry become less profitable because price cutting triggers retaliation and price wars. Online price scars can occur with breathtaking speed with no need to add a new price tax to physical merchandise. Price wars also affect the behavior of buyers, reminding them to shop around for bargains and damaging industry profitability. Slow growth can also lead to intense rivalry among existing competitors. If sales are flat, any competitive strategy from one company will steal market share from the others. So incumbents will counter every competitive move. Changes may be constant, but the pace is not. Technology is a major accelerant. The, the power of contemporary technology redefines business landscape, shapes the structure and behavior of organizations, helps to overcome structural, geographical, and time barriers, and ultimately determine the success of organization. With such an influence, organizations cannot ignore technology. They must embrace it. As organizations develop technology, exploit technology, sell technology, they must ensure that they refresh and rejuvenate their business models to ensure they are not wrong-footed or even marginalized by competitors. Their business architecture must change in tandem. New technological advances are creating opportunities for a startup organization to challenge the fundamental business models of industry sector leaders sometimes leaving them standard, stranded and struggling to survive and compete. Examples include Amazon versus Bookstore, iTunes versus Music Store, Google versus traditional advertising, iPads versus laptop versus desktops, smartphones versus mobile phones, Netflix versus blockbusters. If those examples don't convince, today they are organization that can attract more revenues from the advertising on their website than they can from the products and services they channel through the website. We can be sure that there is more to come. The 21st century has been declared the century of intellectual property. If everyone owns a 3D printer in 20 years time, then distribution of print designs will become the new media content. The internet has shrunk the world and provided access to global community to ramp up competition. Controlling the flow of information between departments, using computer network and internet increase the efficiency of the business operation involved. Information systems and technology also increase the effectiveness of management decision making. Managers use information system to get information to help in their decision making. For example, when deciding whether to grant credit to customer, a manager can use an information system to examine the customer's credit history with relevant and readily available information from computer information system, managers can make better decisions. All the information process activities discussed are performed better with the aid of information system and technology. Information system provides the method and technology to support information needs 
and process for every function in all types of businesses. Information systems are used in accounting, finance, marketing, manufacturing, and human resource management. They are, around, they are found in manufacturers, wholesalers, retailers, service businesses, not-for-profit not -for -profit organization, and government agencies. No matter what the function or the type of business, information systems play important roles. However, as organizations develop, exploit, and sell technology, they must ensure that they refresh and rejuvenate their business model to ensure they are not wrong-footed. Information systems potentially play their most valuable role when they are integrated closely with strategy and tie, tie to the major initiatives that will help to achieve, achieve such strategic objectives. Today, in most developed societies, information technologies have become pervasive. Information technologies are, in fact, used throughout society. The development of sophisticated web technologies has brought about a fundamental shift in types of information technologies that are being used. And we are seeing five mega trends that shape organization and society. Knowing about the influence of these mega trends will be increasingly important for both your work life and your personal life. Let's explore each of these individually. Mobile computing is becoming pervasive and many people are constantly connected to the digital world. In developing nations, there is often a jump directly to mobile technologies, which avoids the high cost infrastructure of traditional land-based phone system. This can lead to both opportunities and challenges, both for managers and marketers. Social media has emerged as a dominant factor in online socialization, dominant, dominant force in online socialization. Examples, Facebook for friends and families, Google Plus for social circles. Businesses can leverage social media to communicate with customers. Business intelligence can be con conducted, mining social media sites for good and bad sentiment towards the business and the factors driving it. Lots of physical objects are interconnected and automatically share data about the internet. According to Gartner Research Report, the number of wirelessly connected devices will reach 26 billion by end of 2020. A research by Cisco estimates the Internet of Things will bring global businesses a profit of close to $14 trillion. Economist study found that 95% of business leaders will leverage Internet of Things in next three years. Examples of Examples of Internet of Things include monitoring home temperature while on vacation, alerting drivers of parking spaces and traffic volumes, cardiac monitors alerting phys physicians of potential health risk, smart cities, smartphone, smart homes, and e-health. Cloud computing is really about sharing technology resources and taking the pain out of using and sharing data and applications. A major advantage is backup and reliability. If your computer breaks, you haven't lost your data. Also, you can access your files from any computer. For example, have you ever used Dropbox? It requires connectivity to function, so the constant connectivity we see at, at work and play is a key enabler. Mobile computing has further added to the value of the cloud metaphor. Business continue to gather ever larger quantities of data as they seek to have the proper data to manage their business effectively and efficiently. This presents new opportunities if it can be properly analyzed and mined for information. This data is often unstructured, such as natural language postings about a business. The resources required to mine big data pose tremendous challenge for businesses. Michael Porter identified three basic strategies that are most likely to lead to success. Low-cost leadership strategy, product differentiation strategy, focus strategy. There are also hybrid models that combine elements of these three strategies. 
Uh, the low-cost leadership strategy means offering a similar product at a lower price compared to competitors. Kia Motors and Southwest Airlines are examples of companies that pursue a low-cost leadership strategy. To be successful, the company has to cut every gram of fat in the value chain using information system to automate and streamline processes. A recently search for ways to reduce operating expenses <clears throat> and achieve efficiencies pervades this strategy. For example, Walmart's enormous success as a low-cost leader in retailing comes especially from its IT-supported supply chain. Product differentiation involves adding special features or unique add-ons for which customers are willing to pay more. This strategy tends to reduce threats from substitute products and erects barriers to new entrants. Apple is a clear example of this strategy with its Macintosh computers, iPod, iPhones, and iTunes music store. Differentiating the product or service for a particular market, market niche is called a focus strategy. For example, Research in Motion, or RIM, positions its BlackBerry smartphones for the business and government segment with conservative looks and business-oriented features. Because the digital age has shaken the five forces that shape competitions, companies can find successful parts with hybrid models, such as shooting for the best value for the lowest price. Companies also achieve a different kind of success by building a large and wrapped audience to gain market share in a market that did not exist before. YouTube took that route by attracting millions of people who wanted to share their homemade videos with friends. Google bought YouTube for more than 40 times the sum investors contributed. All of these strategies leverage information system to succeed. Often, information technology is at the heart of the company's competitive advantages. Let's take an example of a company that aligns information system in business strategies. The company IKEA, which was founded in Sweden in 1943, is the world's largest furniture retailers. Companies like IKEA need robust and flexible information systems to run their businesses, striving to balance efficient operations as and effective results. Every organization that handles money and hires people must rely on systems to manage accounting, finances, assets, procurement, and human resources. Companies such as global retailers must also deal with intricate supply chains. Organizations that serve customers need information systems to manage operations and build enduring relationships. The industrial logistic managers use a computer-based inventory replenishment management process developed by IKEA called minimum maximum settings to respond to store-level inventory reorder points and reorder products. Due to the fact that all IKEA inventory is only stocked at night after opening hours, the logic of its minimum maximum settings is based on the number of products that will be sold from the reserve stack of bean in a single day or two day period. The process meets customer demand while minimizing ordering too few or too many products. This strategy also ensures that IKEA has ready inventory to meet customers. IKEA has a clear vision supported by complementary cross-functional logic. This not only differentiates IKEA from its peers but also provides it with a competitive advantage that is difficult to duplicate at other organizations. While it may be hard for other organizations to copy IKEA's successful formula with stock management and order fulfillment, IKEA's supply chain strategies to push against boundaries. This will hopefully inspire you to develop your company's inventory strategies suited for your company's particular operations. IKEA sets an optimistic trend where more companies will move away from traditional and outdated supply chain management strategies used for generous to seek creative and better suited solution to handle 
inventory. So, to do things faster, better and smarter, business needs an inf efficient information systems. A business information system is a group of interrelated components that convert data into information products that can be used to support operational activities in an organization. Business information system relies typically on five basic resources, people, hardware, software, communication, and data. The speed, accuracy, and reliability of computer-based information systems mean that they are able to handle repetitive tasks involving large volumes of data. Furthermore, they are best used in situations governed by clear and logical rules. This makes them ideally suited to transaction processing or process control applications. From this, it is reasonable to suggest that the widest use of computer-based information systems will be at the operational level of an organization. Business information systems are commonly divided into two broad categories. Systems that support an organization's business activities and systems that support managerial decision making. Operations information systems are generally concerned with process control, transaction processing, communications, internal and external, and productivity. Management information systems provides feedback on man organizational activities and help to support managerial decision making. Managerial decision making can occur at the operational, tactical, and strategic levels of an organization. As shown in this table on your left, both of these broader categories can be subdivided type into a number of additional categories. Note that the categories given here represent a traditional view of computer-based information systems and tend to downplay the growing importance of new and emerging types of information system, many of which might not fit neatly into, the, into this table. As an example, uh, some people feel that systems based around the use of uh, the internet, such as e-business and e-commerce, should be given their own category. So, it appears that in a business operation, we need to know relevant business rules that could help decision making smarter and align information technologies efficiently as well as effectively. <clears throat> Structured decision involves situations where the rules and constraints are known and where information needs can be clearly defined. These characteristics allow structured decisions to be automated by incorporating them within a business information system. Decision-making theory provides a framework for representing structured decision in a formal and systematic way. A key concept associated with decision-making theory is that of the business rule. Business rule describe what action the organization should take when a particular situation arises. Business rules are made up of three parts, an event that triggers the rule, a condition to test, and the actions to be taken according to the outcome of the test. Business rule approach enables a better alignment between information systems and business and a greater business agility. A business rule and business process are essential artifacts in defining the requirements of the software systems. Business process capture business behavior, while rules connect process and thus control process and business behavior. Since the business rules go governing a particular situation can be complicated, various tools are used to make sure that they are applied in a logical and consistent way. The diagrams and tables, for instance, provide a standardized way of presenting rules that makes them easier to understand and follow. These tools also make it easier to implement business rules within computer programs. As an example, as shown here, a bank might use a business rule that specifies only customers who have held an account for three or more years can be considered for a loan. However, 
We cannot develop and respond to business rules efficiently as well as effectively unless we understand business models and its architecture. Business architecture is a collection of assets, methods, processes, and resources that all contribute towards enabling the goals of the organization. <clears throat> business architecture is a complex topic comprising numerous layers. Developing a business architecture for an organization means taking a 360 degree perspective, incorporating each of those layers. The organization must support progressive change with minimal impact to business operations. It must also facilitate business-led reconfiguration to enable the timely exploitation of new business opportunities. To achieve this, it is believed that organization must be created from an explicit business architecture. Complexity and richness of capabilities increasing. Organizations are using layering, componentization, and encapsulation, standardized interfaces, and standards to hide and manage complicities. Managing complicity efficiently drives up the number of parts in a solution. Organizing the parts structurally and determining how they behave and interact requires an architecture to ensure that the collective set of parts operates optimally. Also, smarter or multi-purpose, multi-feature parts are more complex than unipurpose parts. For parts, read components. For components, read resources. For resources, read people. The multifaceted nature of these parts means that to suit circumstance, they can be configured in different ways, can be fit together in different ways, can operate in different ways. With a solution like an aircraft, with thousands of different kinds of parts, without an architecture composed of superstructures, structures, assemblies, sub-assemblies, and parts, conception would be difficult and construction and maintenance would be harder. Furthermore, the, the aircraft has to be designed to cope with the challenges it will face in the skies. To support the management and evolution of organizations, Business architecture must have a viable business model in which its value proposition lies at its core. Here in this slide, you can see a summary of the value proposition of business architecture. However, the delivery of an architecture doesn't bring any direct benefit in its own right. Business architecture is not a solution. It is a tool. In the right hand, it becomes an asset of strategic value to the organization in the 21st century. So, thank you for being with this presentation. For any query, please email to me. And have a nice time.